proficiency in Spanish. <laughs> he accused him of being a poor example of an American because, and I quote, I think that while we're in this nation, we should be speaking English, end quote. And I'm actually not here to argue that there isn't a grain of truth in what he says. English is clearly the predominant language in the country in both public and private life. But Trump's comments go much further than simply arguing that it's a good idea for immigrants to learn English, which it is. Rather than argue for multilingualism, Trump argues for what he calls assimilation. And here's another quote from Trump. I'm not the first one to say this. We have to have assimilation to have a country. And we're going to use our critical thinking skills today to show how misguided and actually dangerous this idea is, even if at first it seems to make sense. So Trump says he's not the first to suggest assimilation, and that's actually true. The problem is that assimilation efforts are an expression of power and domination. So let me just give you a couple of examples of some assimilation efforts across the road. So I'm a Spanish professor, so can you guys tell me what language you speak in Spain? Okay, Spanish, right? Okay, but guess what? Spanish isn't actually the only language spoken in Spain. In Spain, they also speak Catalan, Gallego, Vasco, Valenciano. These are rich and ancient languages. Um, well, so in the mid 20th century, they had this dictator named Francisco Franco. He was sort of a fascist buddy of like Hitler and Mussolini and those guys. And he instituted a series of laws and programs that imposed the use of Spanish only in all areas of public and private life, in schools, the government, and all sorts of things. Well, guess what? Those languages survived. Um, and not only that, but just yesterday, you saw the news, Catalonia actually elected um, a majority in parliament of the separatist party. So we're act they're actually rejecting the Spanish-only model. Right here in South Dakota, we have a clear example of this. Following the Dawes Act, thousands and thousands of native kids were pulled from their homes sent off to boarding school and punished for speaking their native languages. And yet, these languages survive. And so why have we tried this over and over again and yet failed? Well, it's because of some false assumptions. So let me tell you about some of those. So a lot of times, uh, advocates of assimilation believe that if we all speak the same language, then we're all going to think the same way, right? So they equate monolingualism with ideological unity. But we just know that that's not always the case. For example, in the United States, our ideological unity is based on the principles of the United States Constitution, not on a common language, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, etc. Um, the second false assumption is that there is actually only one language in the United States. Uh, the 2009 census uh, found 337 different languages spoken and signed in the United States. Uh, and of course, the United States has no official language on a federal level. Spanish, by the way, is already a majority language in certain regions of the United States. In Miami-Dade County, that number is 62%, according to the 2009 survey. And in El Paso County, that number reaches 73%. We're talking about Puerto Rico, which is a U.S. territory, uh, where 100% of the families there speak Spanish, among other things. And in fact, the United States is actually the world's second largest Spanish-speaking country, second only to Mexico, and it has more Spanish speakers than Spain itself. And the last faulty assumption that I want to address is that, you know, you, sometimes you go down to the mall of Sioux City and you hear people speaking Spanish, Guess what? Just because you hear somebody speaking Spanish in the United States doesn't mean that they don't also speak English. In fact, new research shows that the majority of all the Spanish in the United States, whether they're U.S. or foreign-born, also speak English. So forced assimilation does not, does not create unity, but rather uh, anger, divisiveness, and retaliation. So while some like Trump prefer to build walls, I prefer to build bridges. Did you know that?
that English is actually one of the most difficult languages in the world to learn. This, right? So when you need someone who's struggling with English, when you need somebody with an accent, don't lose your patience. Tip your hat and respect. And think about your own language skills and your own language skills. So Pope Francis was just here this week, right? He speaks four languages, including some English, but he chose to deliver 14 of his 18 addresses during his visit in his native language, Spanish. And in Philadelphia, he addressed the U.S. Hispanic population directly to encourage them to resist efforts of assimilation. Here's what he said. No se avergüence nunca de sus tradiciones. No olviden las lecciones que aprendieron de sus mayores y que pueden enriquecer la vida de esta tierra americana. I'm among those who count the Spanish of my father not as an American problem to be solved, but as a gift to American life. Muchas gracias.